Uh, welcome to another edition of 24-7 with Jotty Tension. I have the privilege, the honor, uh, the opportunity to interview a great, great legend. Possibly, honestly, the greatest fighter you have never heard about. I didn't say a good fighter, I said a great fighter. This is the fighter's fighter. This is who the other fighters talk to me about. Not of our generation. That's why I said who you have never heard about. Everyone in his generation knows who I'm talking about. But I bring you the opportunity. It's my pleasure again to introduce you to the great master, Harold Scorpion Barrage. It's a pleasure, sir, to have yes. you here with us. Um, tell us about yourself. Well, first, the intro was so great. I'm, I'm wondering <laughs> if you're talking to the same person. <laughs> you know, uh, thank you so much for your kindness. I appreciate that. And to all the people that uh, put my name on their lips in any form or fashion, I appreciate that too. As far as myself, it's, it's really not much to tell. I'm a Chicagoan, you know, been all my life. Grew up on the west side of Chicago, you know, and started uh, martial arts training early in life because of fear of being, you know, jumped on, mm -hmm. accosted, or however you want to say it. So I decided to protect myself. I've tried to weapons. teach people along the way. Uh, some of the good fighters will tell you when I fought them, they asked me what they did wrong. I try to inform them because I need to keep a challenge for myself to stay on top. That's right. You know, or stay in the game. If, if I don't allow somebody else to pick up on what I'm doing, I never devise anything further. So eventually, good fighters pick up on what you're doing yes, anyway. Yes, yes. They want to know why they get beat. That's right. And if you don't tell them, they'll tape you That's and right. find out and what it is. They'll still tape you, right? Exactly. So, you know, now with all the uh, cameras and it's pretty easy to find what people are doing mm -hmm. that's, that's beating you or mm -hmm. beating somebody else that they can't beat mm -hmm. or whatever. So, you know, it's, it's really no secret. If you want to know, you can be told. But when there wasn't a lot of cameras out, I try to tell people. I didn't mind telling them how to beat my students, especially when they got big heads, because I wanted them in class to devise mm. other things, mm. not just be one-dimensional. I've always considered myself a three-dimensional fighter. I can do almost anything, or at that time, just about anything. Well, well uh, and let's interrupt you. Mm -hmm. I, uh, let, me, let me just kind of, I, I feel just, you know, it's my duty, it's my duty to, to pay homage. I think a lot of us as fighters or we become champions that we forget the, the blueprint that we learn from. Mm -hmm. and, and one of my mentors, Richard Plowden, has told me, and, and let me say this, Richard Plowden is a, uh, vet, is a critic. He doesn't give nobody credit. I mean, Richard, he's all right, Jody. He's, he's decent. So I take his opinion. I really value his opinion. Mm -hmm. He told me, out of his mouth, Richard Plowden has told me that he learned more from you than any fighter ever. And he said to me, you beat him 18 times. You know, Rich is a scientist. He remembers everything. He said, you beat him 18 times. He said, and he said, Jody, and he said it with passion. He said, Jody, the man was great. That left leg taught me a whole, <laughs> whole, whole lot. And, and so for me to be sitting here two generations later, um, maybe one generation later fighters, but to be sitting here with you, you know, I think, again, the other fighters need to take note that we need to pay homage to those that came before us. I mean, there's so many times that we can, we can honor Akata from 500 years ago, but we can't honor what we see right in front of us, you know. So I, I'm just here again to honor you and, and to tell your story because, I, again, I hear all the greats mention your name. And that being said, I want to ask you, what, what, why is it that we don't know about Harold Barrage the way we would may know about Nasty and Richard? Why isn't... They know you like that, and they hold you in that same level. Why wouldn't the public know you like that, in your opinion? It's, it's, I never really, uh, to be honest, I never really sat down and pondered that. You know, uh, I'm a martial artist. I try to be a true martial artist, and I'm very outspoken. So uh, a lot of times I get myself in trouble by the way I talk and to who I talk to. <laughs> I can relate. So uh, uh, fighters no fighters. That's right. And we learn from each other. If you don't learn from a fighter, you 
that's them beating you, you won't learn at all. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you're trying to be good, you got to fight people that are good. Mm -hmm. Now, Richard, I think Richard is an excellent fighter, and I couldn't tell you how many times he beat me because <laughs> he done knocked some sense out of my head. But uh, we, because of his uh, proximity to Chicago, we fought I, maybe 30, 40 times, and he's beat me just as much as I beat him. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that great. You know, I'm really not that great, and I'm not a, a big issue in the scheme of things. I've always tried to push the martial arts in this area because I'm proud to be in Chicago at one time. The way tournaments are going now, I'm not so proud because people done watered it down so bad. It's, it, it repulses me to an extent. The uh, competitors are disrespectful. The parents run on the floor. You know, the, the instructors are, I couldn't say half of them. I, I, I just, I, I'm, when it comes to big tournaments, I go occasionally, but I don't go to tournaments anymore like I used to because I'm, I'm very saddened by how it's progressed since my time. Okay, well, okay. Let, let me ask you this then. So seeing both sides, what would you say as far as the fighting aspect is th the difference between, can you tell me a little bit how it was back when you fought compared to what you see now? That makes you feel like this is, this is not, you know, how I remember it. As far as the mentality, how do you, the, in, in the comparison to the athletes, what's the difference that you see as far as from a fighter's perspective? Well, from a fighter's perspective, the athletes are not in the shape they used to be in. They are, some of them are faster naturally, not so much physically, but as far as their physical ability, they cannot take a punch. In my day, they, uh, most of them, not all of them, always, there's always exceptions to yes, every sir. rule. Yes, sir. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying all. But then you got to look at it. I travel extensively at one time. I don't go out of Chicago anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So primarily, I'm talking about in my area. You know, I go to people who call me up and ask me to come. But a lot of times I don't go because it don't afford me. Like I say, I'm very taken back by the way things are now. You know, the fighters gripe. We gripe, but we didn't make scenes. They gripe when they don't get a point. You know, I, I, hmm. I, now the West Coast was a griping area. Some of them <laughs> griped a lot. But then you got had outgoing fighters out there, too, that would stand up and fight anybody toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The, the guys are not like that anymore. They don't have a heart anymore. A lot mm. of them don't want to be hit. And if you fight, you're going to get hit. It's just that simple. I don't think there's a fighter to this day that hasn't been hit and have been a champion. So, you know, I, I, just, I just don't understand the mentality they want everything right now instead of working for it and looking at the future. It's like the future is right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know you're not promised tomorrow, but I don't think I would have succeeded in what I tried to do if I had a worried about right now and not build for tomorrow. That's what I did. Could, so could you tell me a, a little bit about your work ethic then? What, how was your training regimen? What, what, what made you great? You know, along with your training regimen and your training regimen, and who are the fighters that pushed you to want to train to that level? Okay. To be perfectly honest, I looked in the magazines, and I wanted my name to be in the magazine. Hmm. When I was coming up, I saw Larry Kelly, uh, Bobby, Bob, what's his name? Bobby, uh, I fought him one time, and they, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Nasty Anderson wasn't out there like he came out with me basically but I saw a lot of paper champions that's what I call them paper champions because when I when I stood up to fight them a lot of them couldn't hold a candle mm. and, and, and to none of the fighters in my school less than on me but they always found a way to get me out of there before I fought the real big guy you know Super Dan Anderson was a big guy he is a nice person I mean, an uh, uh, excellent martial artist and throw some hell of a tournaments. But I, I never competed against him, and I never really saw him in action. You know, I saw a lot of the older guys, you know. Uh, 
I, it's hard for me to name, I think half the guys in my era, like Nasty and uh, Mafia Holloway and, and uh, Billy Blanks. Billy Blanks especially, that knocked my brains loose. So, you know, I, it's hard to remember those things, but I have fond memories of them. I have very fond memories of the guys. Larry Tankson is one. These guys pushed me to be good. Mm -hmm. If I had a notion to be in a magazine, they didn't just put you in a magazine for nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you I saw it. my, you, you have to earn your way earn in a magazine. But uh, you know, when you know this guy or know that guy, a lot of times you get that, that uh, exposure. You know, it, it politics in every walk of life right now. So th th this, 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 this is another question that I have. This is, this is another question that I have. And just, just for me, you know, looking back, you know, I, I wasn't in an era, but I hear about Anthony Price, Nasty Anderson, Mafia Holloway, Bully Blank, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Why weren't you on trans or, or you on, because they speak of you so highly. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think the public understands how highly they speak of him. This guy, I don't want to say underrated, but underrated. Like, I, the, the, they speak of you in such an esteem. And like I said, they don't, they don't speak about everybody. It's a small group they speak of. And... So why is a guy that they speak of highly like this, and you had to be a bad, bad, bad man, <laughs> why weren't you on that team? Or were you on any sponsor team to help you have the opportunities that these guys had? Um, I had a private sponsor, and he sent me for one year, uh, maybe a little longer, he sent me to different terms. And okay. it's very expensive. Yes, it is. You know, when you work a... a yeah, yes, sir. On a daily basis, yes, you sir. have to work. Then you have to work out. Then you have to uh, sacrifice certain things to get certain places. It's not very easy, you know. So, I mean, people probably never heard of me like they probably did the other guys because I wasn't afforded the ability to travel extensively. I've done some traveling mm -hmm. with the help of a guy that I knew named Lenny Terry. He okay. helped me extensively. And I thank God for him every day. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have heard of me other than this area at all. You know, I travel because of his kindness and because I was a blessed individual. And I'm still blessed because I'm still here. That's right. That's you right. Know. And, and, and I thank you for doing the interview. Hey, listen, man, you know, you, know. you inspire my mentor. He inspires me. So it still goes back. It's, it's a, it's, it's, it still goes back. It's, it's just I, I respect you. You know, I'm just meeting you for the first time. Like I said, it's, 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 I'm excited. I feel like a groupie, <laughs> but, but it's all right, you know. Um, but again, it's, 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 it means something to me to pay homage. And uh, my mother always told me, you get somebody roses why they can smell them. And I just want the world to see the man that I hear everybody talking about. Because I, when we did the interview before uh, with, with the guys, you know, I, they spoke about you and Alvin Prouder and Larry Tinkson more than anybody, you three. Mm -hmm. 